shock the system. Welcome to Dank Discussions with your host, Calican CEO, Maynard Breslow. In each episode, you'll learn from the trailblazers, leaders, entrepreneurs, and influencers in the ever-moving, ever-growing cannabis industry. We at Calican are passionate about cannabis and CBD marketing, branding, SEO content, and web design. If you are a cannabis owner and you know you need an uptick in business or an upgrade in the way your customers perceive you, come check us out at calican.com and schedule a time to speak with us today. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Dank Discussions. Today we're joined by Dr. Swati Varanasi. Dr. Swati is not only a pharmacist, she's also the co-founder and chief scientific officer of Element Apothec. How's it going today, uh, Dr. Swati? Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm great. Lovely to be here. I yeah, know it's a pleasure. Pleasure's all mine. Really excited for this. So we already had a, a great chat and uh, we're going to be getting into some fun, exciting things for everybody out there. We'll be talking about the intersection of integrative medicine and cannabis, you know, basically the marriage between Eastern and Western medicine. We'll be talking a little bit on uh, cannabis science, medical research, but also, you know, what people need to know when they're actually approaching their doctor and adding cannabis into their lifestyle and routine and kind of how to approach that subject. So really good stuff, practical stuff, and obviously talking about you and uh, your brand and how you've grown that as well. So it's a little something for everybody. Now, before we get into that, you know, I always say uh, we'll start off easy. So let our listeners know where you're based out of today. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm speaking out of uh, Los Angeles this morning. Amazing, amazing. Where in LA? In West Hollywood. Oh, uh, very good. Yep, I'm uh, centered in the valley uh, most mm-hmm. of the year, but I travel a lot. So very good. So cool. You know, talk to me a little bit about listen, your pharmacist. And here you are now, not just interested in the cannabis and cannabis science research, medical research, right? But also, obviously, the co-founder of your own brand. So, I mean, how do you get from Swathi to Dr. Swathi, the pharmacist, and now to being the co-founder of a, of a cannabis brand, CBD brand? Definitely. Yeah. So I always say I'm like such an unconventional, like weird black sheep kind of in the within the healthcare space and then and everything. So, yeah, I guess to start from the beginning. So I always knew I wanted to do something in healthcare. I always was interested in what type of role I could play, but I wasn't quite certain what that would look like. And so that, you know, led me to pharmacy. I like even going Farther back than that, I was always interested in travel and languages. So I actually majored in Spanish um, a long time ago. And after that, knew that I could utilize that as a tool in whatever healthcare practice I end up going into. And I find use in the knowledge of Spanish and being able to relate to a broader range of patients every day, whether it's in my current role in in pharmacy or if it's, you know, just at the supermarket and someone has a question. So like all different kinds of, of ways that I've found a way to integrate that into my life. So going from there, as I mentioned, you know, interest in healthcare. And when I ended up in, you know, pharmacy school, I really thought there'd be more of a focus on everything health and wellness, because to me, what I saw with pharmacists, you know, in a pharmacy is that there are a bunch of supplements around them. There were, you know, other, you know, health food products, all these other things too. It wasn't just focused on the prescriptions. And so I went down a very unconventional path and I am an integrative health pharmacist. I saw a void in the market. And it was something that I knew that pharmacists could play a role in. And the more I looked into it, the more I saw, you know, there were other types of healthcare professionals in the market. And so I wanted to be a part of that. And so seeing that there wasn't, you know, any, any set path for that, I met an incredible mentor and moved out to LA and I'm still here, (laughs) moved out to LA to train with her. And so we started the first ever postdoctoral residency training program for pharmacists interested in pursuing this path in in integrative health. And so my mentor, she's been an integrative health pharmacist for decades now, and she is such a wealth of information from 
actual patient experience to knowing what's in the research and what's evidence-based. And so learned so much from her and did my training at a pharmacy, an independent natural pharmacy, as well as a clinic. And so had the one-on-one patient experience in a lot of, you know, a range of settings in those as well as in the hospital. And then after that, and rather not even after that, I always knew I was interested in entrepreneurship as a very, you know, young person, when people had asked what you want to do when you grow up, I coined this term where I said I was going to be an inventor, which I'm not even sure is, is you know, a real term, but I like knew that like that I wanted to do something within innovation and I wanted to do something interesting and new and different. And I guess a lot of the things even leading up to what I've said right now are all about like innovating and forging your own path. But I knew that I wanted to do something with creating a brand or some way that I could bring my unique expertise to others. And so after I finished my training, I did a lot of consulting. I worked with a lot of different small up and coming brands that were interested in having medical personnel on their advisory team. They're interested in building out some, you know, evidence-based content, whether that's on blog, video, podcasts, like all different types of multimedia ventures. And so I was able to contribute to a lot of other brands. And then in in that path, I found some incredible co-founders and we started Element Apothic, which is a clean beauty and wellness brand. We do utilize the beauty of cannabinoids and really what science can offer, science, really the intersection of science and nature, what all of that can offer for everyone to be the best version of themselves. So we do utilize cannabinoids, CBD, as well some other minor cannabinoids like CBG and CBN or cannabigerol and cannabinol for those who are not fully aware of what those acronyms mean. I guess the the cannabis space is really filled with so many acronyms. I'll try to break them down every time. And so, yeah, we incorporate cannabinoids and then also other herbs too. And my background in integrative medicine and the way that I define integrative health or integrative health pharmacy really is the combination of all the different health, healing and wellness modalities But at the center of it all really is individualized, personalized medicine and what we call patient-centered shared decision-making. And so that's putting the patient in the center of every single discussion that involves their health. And so that as a you know, healthcare professional, I lay out all the possibilities and options because within integrative health, within all these different modalities, I mean, there are so many different things that we can do to just heal or try to, you know, improve different parts of our lives. And so I feel like only giving a patient one option really isn't fair to them and not really fair probably to their treatment goals and their lifestyle. And so I feel like having products like the ones that we have, we incorporate a lot of different healing modalities all in one product from traditional Chinese medicine herbs to Ayurvedic herbs to, you know, adaptogenic herbs, which I guess could fall in either of those categories as well. And then, yeah, mixing those with the power of cannabis as a plant and bringing that all together to create products ranging from tinctures. So on the wellness side of the you know spectrum, as well as face serums and a lot of other innovative product formulation that we're working on right now. And so, yes, at the company, I'm involved with and in charge of everything, product innovation, as well as education. And so education is something that's really important to me. And the reason why I think it's so important to come on podcasts like this and talk about about the importance of evidence-based practice and the importance of sharing knowledge that is based in science and based in medicine and what's been investigated. Because as you probably know, there is so much information out there now about what is cannabis, what can cannabis be used for, why cannabis over something else. But what's most important to me is that whatever we're sharing and whatever I'm talking to patients about is really based in science. No, that's all great stuff. You know, you definitely covered a lot of ground there. Took us on a little bit of a journey there and, you know, a lot to kind of follow up on. I mean, I guess, you know, first and foremost, this whole, you know, integrative medicine and this it seems to me as though many times this pharmaceuticals are seem to be completely at odds with more holistic terms, complete, you know, of healing and 
specifically Eastern kind of means of healing. And it seems like there's really this barrier that we have to overcome, right? Where it's like either or, right? I mean, it seems like you've been able to integrate it pretty easily. Was there a challenge there along the way that was like, okay, I know you said that it was surprising, right? Getting in and being like, oh, I thought we were going to be more about people, right? Not so much just about, you know, prescribing prescriptions, right? And, And aside from that, have you seen, been able to kind of shift maybe uh, colleagues or anything, sway them to be more along on uh, your kind of way of thinking that along those lines? Yeah, no, I mean, what I really see right now within the healthcare professional sphere is that more and more people are getting interested in other opportunities for, you know, continuing their education, continuing to learn and opening their mind about other options for their patients. And I think honestly, part of that is that patients are kind of taking the education onto themselves. They're empowering themselves through education that they're learning and bringing it to their healthcare professional and, you know, going to their pharmacist and saying, oh, I heard X, Y, Z, you know, herb could be good for this. What do you think? And, and, and I think that healthcare professionals want to be the best that they possibly can for their patients and help them. And so what I've found is that a lot of healthcare professionals reach out to me and are asking me questions like, oh, what do you think of using cannabis for this? Or what do you think, you know, using calendula for this? Because at the end of the day, they want to help their patients achieve the, you know, whatever goals the patients have themselves. And so a lot of healthcare professionals now are realizing that patients are interested in other healing modalities. And so they, as healthcare professionals, also need to learn the science behind it so that they can help them and provide guidance. Because until now, what I have seen, not until now, but until, you know, the past decade or so, really what I've seen, and still some healthcare professionals out there too, is that a lot of people are afraid of what they don't know. And so what I've heard and you know, even before entering the space, what I've experienced is that if you ask a healthcare professional from, you know, the Western side of medicine, so the conventional side that we're used to in the US, if you ask them, you know, what about this herb, they'll just say, oh, it's dangerous, don't try it, or oh, don't do it, or don't mix it, just because out of their, you know, like professional ignorance towards certain different things that could help their patients. So they're just trying to err on the side of caution. I think a lot of these healthcare professionals, they're not like overtly against it necessarily. They just don't really understand it. And so to try to optimize safety from their perspective of not knowing the science behind it, they just say, oh, don't do it. And I think it's an important thing to talk about because within our training as healthcare professionals, there's very little to no information on herbs or, you know, physicians get one class or one, a few hours, like four or five hours or something on nutrition in their entire curriculum. As in pharmacy, we get about the same. So it's hard to hard to expect a healthcare professional to help you with something like that if their conventional training doesn't lend themselves to it. And so I think there's so much opportunity for growth and opportunity for like, I don't want to say like necessarily like complete change, but like a, you know, addition or transformation of the curriculum now because patients want it. And so it's our duty to learn more about it and, and change what we know or, or not change, but, you know, evolve what we know so that we can help. Yeah. And, you know, and I, the general public is definitely looking at this more, but unfortunately, right. I think we are obviously trained to listen to our doctors, right. right. And listen to our pharmacists. Mm-hmm. So if the pharmacists themselves, right, like you said, are not so well trained on it. They don't spend so much time in their curriculum. And of course, there's specialists, right? And there's nutritionists and there's people who maybe they can refer people to, right? To learn a bit more. But I think a lot of times, you know, there's in the medical profession in general, there carries a certain amount of kind of 
confidence, right? There is a ego where a person's like, well, I know this, like I learned this, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and you kind of stick to what you know, because if you, you know, start giving credence to other things that you aren't on your end, right? Even, you know, putting any nefarious kind of motivations, you know, aside, right? Of like, oh, they just want to keep people on pills and that's where the money is. And, you know, the money isn't in healthcare, it's in sick care and all those kind of things as well, where we, you know, we could get into, but, you know, just even from basic human level, right? Where we're talking about very accomplished people, you know, who have obviously achieved a lot through their confidence and through their knowledge. And it's like, well, I mean, you're coming to see me, right? And, you know, what do you need to talk about this for? I'm telling you right now, you know, you can take these pills and of course, like watch your portion control and go on a walk and blah, blah, blah. But that's pretty much the extent of it, right? A lot Mm -hmm. of times. I mean, aside from that, you know, you mentioned evidence-based science, right? And I think that this is a place where obviously, first and foremost, a lot of stuff can pass itself off as being evidence-based science when it's really not, or people can say, oh, follow the science and this and that. The point being is that I think people are scared to, there's still big stigma associated with, with cannabis in particular, right? Mm-hmm. And especially because they say, well, there isn't enough evidence out there, right? There isn't enough research being done out there. Right. And, you know, it may be true when it comes to the academic world in in America, where, you know, a lot of studies are coming from or in the pharmaceutical world, because that's not where they're putting their focus necessarily. But so what do you talk to those people? Right. I know you're saying that over the last 10 years, there's been a big shift and hopefully we'll continue to shift that. But what about the people who are like, you know, I got a buddy who's, you know, a doctor. Right. I mean, I got into medical school and not going, you know, but point being is that He's like, well, I mean, dude, there's there's nothing on it. He's like, there's nothing. You're never going to learn anything in any exactly class about cannabis. It's just not. So why would I talk to my patients about it? Mm-hmm. Right. What do you say to those people who are just like, hey, you know, I am into evidence based science and there isn't any evidence on it. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great question. And like, that's it's always the biggest thing. Like, where do you start as, you know, someone where I am? where I believe in the benefits of herbs and I also believe in the benefits of prescription. So it's, it's very interesting because it depends on each patient and it depends on really what they want to achieve. And a lot of the time, the best combination is really both. It just, it really depends. And then there are some patients who are very, very interested in switching up their whole regimen to herbs. And so we work on that with them. So I think that where I always start the conversation or when when I'm thinking how to relate to someone like that, I always come at it from, you know, like we're both cut from the same cloth in terms of, you know, where we've come from. We both had very similar training. And so I understand where you're coming from because I also had the same education. I would love to start there. And then the next thing that I really love to talk about that is generally like blows their minds is that, you know, not only are there cannabinoids in the cannabis plant, we also create our own cannabinoids. We have endocannabinoids that are synthesized on demand that also interact with this endocannabinoid system. So I love talking about that because I feel like it gives such an, it's such an amazing context for them to realize that, oh, there's no way cannabinoids by definition, there's no way they can be evil or there's more to them than just the stigma because you know, we create them ourselves. And so, so yeah, that's one of the things I really, really like to start with also is that we have endocannabinoids inside our body right now, probably, especially when I'm even talking though, it's like, you probably have them in your system literally right now. And these endocannabinoids both interact with the endocannabinoid system, but they also interact with non-cannabinoid receptors. So we, we know within the endocannabinoid system, there's two receptors, CB1 and CB2. But we also know at this point within science that there are what are called non-cannabinoid receptors. And so these receptors are not CB1, not CB2, but they work indirectly with the endocannabinoid system as well as sometimes work directly with cannabinoids. So a great example of that is CBD works with a receptor called TRPV1. And so TRPV1 is, it's a receptor system that is found in the skin as well as many other places. But that's a reason why, you know, TRPV1 works so well with like, you know, CBD and creams and lotions and other topical products products, for example, because 
CBD interacts with those receptors to provide that response and therefore provide relief a lot of the time. So I think that's just such an interesting way to start reframing the conversation for them, because even if they come at you with, you know, like all herbs are bad or, you know, we shouldn't trust cannabinoids, like maybe we should look to our bodies first and see that actually we have endocannabinoids in our body that are created for specific purposes. And then that really opens up the conversation a bit more to the next steps of the discussion, which leads to other opportunities for the use of cannabinoids. Oh, yeah, that's great stuff. And yeah, you know, anytime talking about the cannabinoid system and, you know, it's definitely a good place of entry, right? Where people can wait, really? I didn't know that, you know, it's like, yeah, I just mm-hmm. you know, yeah. having a cannabinoid system. I'm like, wow, okay. And, you know, they can look this up and, you know, it kind of lends a lot of credence, obviously, to it's like, you know, well, what, what's this for, right? So that's definitely great stuff. Now, you know, like I've been in this long enough to, you know, I, I grew up in LA, I grew up in the cannabis culture and, you know, this kind of like been what I've been exposed to from a young age. So I've been through enough to realize that there is a lot of stigma and that's okay, right? Like not that it's okay that there's stigma when there shouldn't be, but, you know, kind of accepting that there's barriers for people to overcome in this. You know, you mentioned that here you are coming in and wanting to have a more integrative kind of approach to to what you're doing. And it's one thing to be like, okay, cool. I'm into like herbs and kind of more natural methods. And and it's another thing to take the leap all the way to cannabis, right? And I think that that's like, you know, a place where it's like, I'm glad you made it right, but was there, I think you kind of brushed over it really quickly. What did that leap kind of look like? And was there stigma that you had there? Or were you just kind of like, oh, cool. It's just something else to learn or talk to me about, you know, a little deeper on that side of the path. Yeah, definitely. So to me, like the interest in cannabis as medicine really stemmed from like starting to learn more about it. And I actually have one of the books right in front of me who I, that I like initially started reading. It was one of the first books that I read and it was written by, you know, a pharmacist in the space. And so I just started learning more about the science behind it. And I got so unbelievably fascinated by the endocannabinoid system and what it can do for what it not only can do, what it does do for us and everything else we can do to like help tone our endocannabinoid system and improve it. And so to me, the transition was, yes, I've always been interested in integrative and preventative medicine. And a part of that is herbs. So once I started delving into all the different modalities, including herbs and of course that leading to cannabis i was so unbelievably just like enamored and fascinated that there was so much more that i could learn as a healthcare professional to help patients and also that just at the end of the day when you think about it like very few systems are as connected in the body as the endocannabinoid system and to me that's incredible that means that the endocannabinoid system is linked to so many different processes whether that's you know like a mental process or a rather a mental process or if it's actually like a physiological process and and how so many things are just interwoven and connected and it, it's a beautiful like metaphor as well for the way that integrative health works is that everything is just so connected and and interwoven and just all works so beautifully and synergizes together. No, I love that. I love that. I wish other people would have that kind of experience or that kind of openness. I think that they're definitely, you know, being exposed to, you know, and especially what I found is also, it's not just like a blanket statement, right? But, you know, it takes a lot to be a pharmacist. It takes a lot to be a doctor. You know, Mm -hmm. a lot of people have the certain personality types and, you know, it's like a lot of the kids, you know, who have that goal or like, oh no, I'm not going to touch this stuff. This stuff is, you know, going to ruin my brain and, you know, it's, I'm not going to get stuff done and it just doesn't appeal to them. Right. And then there's all kinds of stigma that kind of builds upon that. In addition to obviously, uh, you know, the propaganda and everything else that we, that we learn along the way. So I'm happy to hear about that now. Definitely. And I think too, that like at the end of the day, like something that like being in this space and also being like, and deciding about, you know, doing something a little bit different off the, you know, so to speak, beaten path is that 
I it's something that you really have to realize is that you can't live your life for other people and you can't just decide, oh, I'm going to go down this, you know, particular conventional road because other people are expecting that of me or because that's, you know, maybe more socially acceptable at this moment in time kind of a thing. Like we can't base our decisions off the opinions and, you know, the maybe ill will or whatever other people are thinking. It's just we can't give other people that kind of power over how we're going to proceed and and, and how we want to impact the world. So I think that being in the cannabis space and being in a, you know, a more unconventional role for a healthcare professional really has showed me that like tenfold that you know, people are going to have their opinions, people are going to say different things. But you also realize, though, that people always say those things until like you're either successful or they're going through something themselves and they're seeking out help and then they come to you. And so it's just so much more complex to figure out what you want to do and to understand that like, You have to make decisions for yourself and be okay with the fact that a lot of people might not understand, but they might understand eventually. I can say from personal experience, like years down the line now, people have come around being like, oh, wait, so I saw this study recently and they like found the study on their own and saw like, oh, wow, maybe there is some potential. So I guess like what you've been doing for the last however many years, like maybe there it is rooted in science. And like, I think that people almost have to come to that conclusion on their own sometimes, but we as, you know, crafting our own path and our own journey can't be caught up in other people's notions and other people's perceptions. Oh, for sure. For sure. And uh, I think that just in the confidence of knowing, you know, that we're we're doing the right thing and it's uh, definitely helping people. And the studies may not be in the States, but it's definitely showing up in other countries around the world, you know, starting in Israel and Germany and a lot of other places as well. So very good. Now, you know, I do want to uh, obviously get into the business side and and your company element apothec a little bit more. But, you know, before we do, I also wanted to obviously touch on what we mentioned at the beginning in regards to what do lay people, any person out there, what do they need to know when approaching their doctor, right? If they... You know, it is something that's interesting to them. It is something that they want to talk about um, in order to add cannabis into their lifestyle and routine and in a way that maybe their doctor would be receptive or, you know, how to react to it when maybe they're not or to find the right one for them. Definitely. I think it's all about preparation. So like when you are thinking, you know, I want to talk to my healthcare provider about this and you should always have a healthcare provider who is open to the idea of you utilizing other things that might be out of the scope of his, their, her, you know, like normal scope of practice. They ha- they should be open to it. And I say this because you should feel comfortable having these conversations with your healthcare provider. I think that is so important. And something that I always say is that if someone's not telling their healthcare professional that they're on a certain supplement, then that's the most dangerous one because then it's possible, you know, there could be drug interactions with cannabis, with other herbs too, with so many supplements, with so many things. So it's possible that there could be something that isn't a good fit for that patient. And so speaking to a healthcare professional who's open, but also speaking to a healthcare professional, ideally, who actually knows a bit about this could be really helpful because they can help guide you in the best way possible. And so when I say preparation, I mean, like, one of the first things a healthcare professional is going to ask is, why cannabis? Why do you want to use it? And so to first, I always say to all, you know, people who are going to approach their healthcare professional, or they're going to, you know, interested in approaching a cannabis specialist to help them on this path. I always say the most important thing first is to have a journal. And so a journal is in like a book, a few, you know, sheets of paper that are bound together that you can keep a lot of the notes from, you know, prepping before you go to see your doctor, during the visit, and then after as well to track your progress, I think is really important to 
be on top of that because it is very different than any other, you know, herbal remedy that is as, you know, widely dispensed in the, in the U S. So I do think that, and so much about cannabis too is, is about it being personalized and, you know, everyone's endocannabinoid system works just a little bit differently. And so a dose that works for your mom or your sister or your son might not work for you. And that's totally fine. And there's nothing wrong with you because of it. It's just everyone has different doses work for different people. And so being able to monitor that and take that into your own hands through having a journal or having, you know, a, a place where you can document that I think is really important. So yes, of course, know the answer to, you know, your treatment goal and why you want to use cannabis to get there. And then also before you go to your appointment, I think it's really important to have a list of questions that are not only for your healthcare professional, but like also those questions can really help guide the conversation too. So these are questions like to demonstrate that you've done your research and that you are coming at this as an educated, conscious consumer and you are are interested in learning more to see how it can fit into your lifestyle. That, in addition, also have either the paperwork with you or have all the information that you need to discuss your diagnosis that corresponds with why you're interested in cannabis. So, for example, if you're, you know, interested in cannabis for your arthritic pain, you know, maybe write down everything else you've tried for arthritis. Write down everything that's worked for you, everything that hasn't worked, how long you've tried these things, if you've had any side effects, all of those different things, really important. And then with that too, always, you know, in that notebook, you should have every single supplement, herb, medication that you're taking right now, even if you only take it once a week or even if you take it less than that, because you never know how certain herbs and certain medications can interact with cannabis or with other things as well. So trying to build the most comprehensive picture for your healthcare professional, especially if it's the cannabis specialist, to build that picture for them will be so helpful because the more information you can provide them, the better the better suggestion and recommendation that they can provide for you. And then during the appointment, you know, ask all those questions you have brainstormed beforehand. So, you know, how do I take this? What type of formulation do you recommend? recommend? How do I take it, of course, and how often should I take it? Are there any side effects I should be aware of? How can I incorporate this into my daily life? And I think that's where, you know, having such the plethora of of formulations out there, it's possible that, you know, one formulation can work really well for someone and someone's, you know, maybe more open to a sublingual tincture, like something that you take under the tongue, whereas other people are really not interested in that kind of formulation, which is totally fine. And there are other things that they can take. And so going back to the example for arthritic pain, I think something like a patch would be amazing if they can point to, you know, my elbow is what has been hurting me because of arthritis. And I've tried, you know, however many other things, you know, maybe a patch, a CBD patch would be an awesome option for them. Then that could be something, you know, that the healthcare professional can say, you know, I'm glad you told me about all these different things you've tried, but maybe a patch would be a really good option for you. And then I think it's also important to understand the patient's lifestyle too. You know, do they have a government job where they could be randomly drug tested, that's really important because then we know that we should only recommend something that, you know, is either a CBD isolate or a broad spectrum, meaning that there's 0% THC. And of course, whatever brand we're going to recommend, we have to ensure that they're transparent with their ingredients and they're transparent with their practices, with their third-party testing that we can access this testing through their certificate of analysis, which is always public documentation. So you should be able to access that from any brand you're ever considering purchasing from. And I mean, there's so many other, you know, so many other aspects of this discussion that are so important, but just going back to something that, you know, we, we talked about a little bit beforehand is that you're the average healthcare professional or healthcare practitioner 
might not know about cannabis. And so if you're interested in incorporating something like this into your life and you want to ask them for advice and for guidance, which I think is so important, I think having a healthcare professional, as I joke, you know, in your back pocket, I think is so important to have someone that you can ask these really and these in-depth questions to and then have these in-depth conversations with, I think is really important because you should be able to feel open to have these conversations and, and also be able able to get really good personalized advice about what you should do. So then, yes, as I mentioned with the journal, very important, bring that with you, take notes during the appointment. And then after that's where you can document, okay, I tried the patch on Monday morning. This is how I felt two hours later. This is how I felt, you know, six hours later, and maybe by the end of the day, how you felt and different things like that. I, I really think that taking control of your pursuit of cannabis as, you know, whether it's for a therapeutic use or any other use, I think is, is really important because there's so many products out there that documenting when you're taking a certain product and what's working, what isn't, how you feel is, is really important. Yeah, definitely what you approach. And I really appreciate all that amazing information. Now, you know, I think we've covered a lot on the science side and, you know, getting into your brand Element Apothec, you know, you've really done an amazing job here with the brand in general. You know, it's a beautiful uh, packaging, beautiful site, really robust, you know, got so much information here, you know, aside from that. And obviously right there is, is you front and center, right? Ask Dr. Swathi and everything else that goes along with it. And I think it's a great resource for your customers to come and to ask and to feel that confidence, right? Just as you suggested for them to do for their healthcare providers, right? You know, obviously you're not you know, their healthcare provider, but, you know, being able to help them make the right decisions for them in that regard. Talk to me a little bit about what went into the branding and what was kind of the, the idea behind it and kind of everything here that's that you provided. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, thank you for that, by the way. And providing that education through Ask Dr. Swathi is really important. We also do intro customer calls. So if a customer's new to us, I call them or someone from my team calls them to ask them, you know, why they're interested in trying it and, and also what we can do to help them on that journey. So after we we get a little, you know, notification that someone's made a new purchase and then I can chat with them and provide that insight. So that's that's really important. And and I think that like moving forward, I'm I'm hoping that other brands really take that model and and try to do that as well with with whomever is interested in an in embarking path of, of trying other healing and health modalities for themselves. So yeah, so thank you for that. And then yeah, with the packaging, our COO, who's within our co-founding team, it's me, the chief scientific officer, then we have our CEO and our COO, so the three of us together. And our COO comes from a design background as well as a production background within Hollywood. He's done a lot of commercials and, and different things like that and different movies. So he has an eye for design. And so we were very lucky that from the get-go, we were able to discuss and talk about, you know, what what's the aesthetic that we want? We want to be a premium brand. We want to be a brand that is not only looks beautiful, but is unisex. That's something that's really important to us, something that anyone can feel comfortable putting on their their bathroom counter or, or in their cabinet and feel comfortable and feel empowered and excited to use our product. And so, and what we found too with our with our customers is that they really are in all types of age ranges and genders and races. And we really are trying to appeal to any and everyone who just wants to improve their life, whether it's, you know, the way that they feel feel, whether the way that they look, the way that they just approach the world being the best version of them. So yeah, so that, I mean, to us, the packaging, it was very important to be as inclusive as possible while being as like modern and chic and forward thinking too. Uh, that's good. No, definitely uh, getting that point across and really good looking stuff. And, you know, obviously it's all about what's inside as well, you know, and so talk to me about, you know, when I talk about maybe some strategies that you've used to help grow your brand and kind of things that you've, that you've seen kind of move the needle, what kind of things come to mind? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as you probably know, you know, the cannabis space is, is pretty saturated. And so it's really important to stand out and stand out for the right reasons. And so some of our pillars really that have helped us stand out 
one of them in particular is education. And I can speak to that as something that I had up at the company is that education is very important. And so whether that's consumer education, student education, or provider education. And so we have really exciting initiatives in, in all of those spheres. And so for student education in particular, we as in the Department of Education within our, our brand, we run an internship program for graduate level students that are healthcare professionals that are interested in learning about cannabis as medicine. They're interested in integrative medicine. They're interested in seeing what how they can apply their conventional knowledge to a new space. And so we have an internship, this internship opportunity. I'm actually, it's very top of mind at the moment because I'm in the midst of doing recruitment. I'm interviewing some second round candidates. I did yet last week and I will continue to do this week to have our new cohort of interns to help guide them on, on their journey of figuring out where they want to be as a healthcare professional. What space do they want to be in? What type of role do they want to have? And so to have shadowing opportunities within our company so they can shadow, you know, our COO who does all things, you know, design and manufacturing, and then they can shadow our CEO, they can shadow our director of business development, and and they can learn of so many different things of what it takes to have a business and grow a business. I think that that's so important and and not enough companies I think are doing that and providing that that chance for people to learn. Especially because I think entrepreneurship is is very big right now. Everyone wants to create and follow their dreams and their passions, but there aren't a lot of opportunities to really learn what that looks like and really what what that means is starting your own company. So yeah, so we run the internship program. And so I work with the scientific communications interns in particular. And so we learn all things medical writing. They help a lot with consumer facing content creation for the blog and social media, as well as how else that, you know, they can provide their knowledge and insight a lot of the time if they're, you know, pharmacy students or they're medical students or nursing students, and they can also provide their knowledge knowledge to create provider facing content like pamphlets and videos and and different things that we can do to share the knowledge and share the the message that there is evidence based information out there and so we're trying to be one of one of those key voices in that space so we do things like that i'm working on the first ever consumer facing consumer specific course. So it'll be an online course for consumers interested in learning about the science behind cannabis and the science behind the endocannabinoid system and hoping that will be live by the end of the year. We're putting our finishing touches on it now, working with an incredible LMS system called Medi Medical Cannabis Mentor and putting together that course for consumers. And so I think that's also really pushing the envelope and showing consumers that we understand that people want to learn about this. They just don't know who to turn to. They don't know what type of resources are out there that can really help them and that can really help them from a science standpoint. And what we found with our customer base, our customer base is brilliant. They love to learn and they they want to learn. And so we want to have opportunities like this and create courses that that they can take so that they can educate themselves and not only educate themselves, but they can educate their loved ones and their colleagues and and everyone around them too, so that they can make the best decisions for themselves and, and everyone around them. So that's a little bit on the um, education side and really what helps us stand apart in that way. The other thing that I'm really passionate about is having an integrative medicine, integrative health background is of course, looking at the beauty and the power of cannabinoids, but also looking at what else nature has provided us. So there's so many different herbs and essential oils and different things that we can put together and you know, package in one product to bring to a patient. And so all of our formulations are innovative, they're custom, we don't white label or anything. And we have not only me, but we also have an incredible medical advisory team that is so knowledgeable on all things integrative medicine. And so we have integrative pharmacists and integrative physicians, some with formulation experience that we're all able to put our heads together and brainstorm, you know, what are the new, innovative, exciting 
ingredients in the space right now? What is evidence-based? Where is the research? Like, what is it pointing to? Would it be something that would make more sense in like, you know, a face lotion or would it make more sense in, you know, an SPF product or would it make more sense in a wellness product? So that is also really important to us too, is how do we bring innovative formulations? If we're going to do capsules, how are they going to be different and exciting and interesting? And at the end of the day, as a pharmacist, one of the most important things to me is that they're efficacious. So they work and we test them. We ensure that they work, but also that they're safe. And I think that safety is something that people don't talk about enough in this space. And, you know, just putting out products, you can't just put them out, especially with a, such a, an incredible, you know, robust team of medical professionals that we work with and have, you know, bi-weekly meetings rather with these professionals to really get their insight is to ensure that what we're putting out works, but also what we're putting out is safe for everyone. And so, yeah, that's a little bit on the product innovation side, a little bit on the education side. And then and then also a great way to distinguish yourself in the space is being transparent and being willing to share any and everything going on with the brand. And I think that that's, that's really important to show that we have nothing to hide and no brand should have anything to hide, that that there is so much going on behind the scenes, but we want to take consumers on that journey with us. I mean, that is all great stuff. I really love there, you know, that aspect of the internship and, you know, bringing in others who are interested in integrative medicine and being able to to show them the way and also leverage that in, in a positive way, right? I know that for me, I'm really grateful for what we have and the success we've been able to achieve. And I know for, for me, I wouldn't be anywhere without uh, mentors that I've had along the way, the people that I've worked for, people who've taken me under the wing. So it's really incredible what you're doing in that regard. You know, we talked about kind of that stigma that still exists and you talked about kind of the shift that's happening. And I think this is a big part of that shift, right? That we can have a, a real hand in, you know, on a, even a one by one basis and, and being able to grow even more, obviously, in regards to the brand and those who are reaching out and the education side. So and it's a lot of great stuff there, you know, definitely, you know, with the saturated market, so to speak, you know, the differentiating it from the pack, so to speak, is really the name of the game. You know, you can try the same techniques that everybody else is doing and look the same way and do the, you know, every, everything's like that. And it's just another kind of product on the shelf or another website out there. So I'm really loving what you got going on there. Now, on the other side of things, yeah. no, I really appreciate it. And on the other side of things, right? So talk to me about maybe some of the things that, that you've struggled with, or maybe some barriers that, you, that you're overcoming that you're still trying to overcome in regards to getting your brand out there. Yeah, I mean, it speaks to, as I mentioned, you know, it's a very saturated space. And so getting your name out there, getting the word out there as a, as a growing brand, I think is really important. And so we're trying to do what we can to distinguish ourselves in the space and trying to show that we really are inclusive and that we're for everyone. And so, I mean, I think it's some of our struggles really are some of the, the same struggles that probably a lot of other people have in the space that we want people to find the good brands. We want people to find things that will really help them. So how can we how can we illustrate that for the consumer? How can we show the consumer that that we have the best interests in mind and that we're really trying to do what we can to provide the best products and the best service as well. So trying to cut through the noise. And another another thing too that has been very interesting is that because we utilize cannabinoids, but we don't only utilize cannabinoids, breaking into the, not only just the CBD and cannabis space, there's also the clean beauty space and there's also the wellness space. And so our brand really does straddle a lot of these different sectors. So that's also been a very interesting and, and challenging place to be too that, you know, our, our brand can fit into so many different, you know, quote unquote boxes. And in such a way, it doesn't, it can't really fit in any box in, in the same way. So yeah. And so another thing that we are really looking to distinguish ourselves in is, is in clean beauty. And so very excited that a few weeks ago, we won the 2022 Clean Beauty Award, the international awards for our lotion in the body care category. And we were a finalist 
in the face serum category for our face serum. So taking strides and trying to find your place in the market, I think is an ongoing, you know, exciting adventure for every brand. Yeah, no. And uh, I mean, that's, that's an amazing accomplishment there. It speaks to the formulation there. I think, you know, you mentioned as well in terms of having exciting and new formulations, you know, and you have a whole medical advisory team, right? Might as well take advantage of it, you know, and with you obviously as a co-founder, right? So that definitely speaks to that, right? I think, you know, for better, for worse, we see a lot of the same stuff out there. And obviously everybody's a little bit different, not to knock anybody else or any other brand or anything like that at all. But um, it's definitely nice to see uh, what you guys are doing. It's really great now. I guess, you know, what what's exciting coming up now for Element Apothec and the future they have coming up? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So many things. So we recently just signed with Mello. And so Mello is a distribution group owned by CBD of Denver. And so we are officially going to be in Switzerland and Germany, as well as Mello continues to grow in a lot of the other European countries. So we have a press release coming out soon about that. So we're so excited about that. So I guess if if this comes up before the press release, you would have heard it here first. So that's one of the exciting things. Just the international expansion opportunities are are really amazing and, and really great. And currently with what we're doing. So there's that. We also have a partnership with a resort community as well, the Beach Samui that is in Thailand. And so We are launching with them and they are putting together CBD experiences. So for all of their guests, they're going to be different experiences from, you know, having CBD in their welcome coconut water to CBD incorporated in massage lotions that we have. And Element Apothic is really going to play a big role within CBD and everything going on with resorts in Thailand, which is very, very exciting. We are officially one of the first brands to be imported into Thailand. So very excited for all the all the international expansion opportunities and, and what's to come with, with other countries like Japan as well. Oh, that is really exciting. You know, really exciting. It just shows to uh, the globalization that we have here. And, you know, we're really on the cutting edge, you know, in a, in a space where obviously, you know, going from a place in LA, right, where have to hide everything that we're doing and then to a place where, okay, cool, we have, access to to it as a medical in terms of medicine and medical marijuana and then now you know on the uh, adult use and going on and on you know seeing how every single state's kind of taken on its own way and now we're at a place here where you guys need to be distributed across the world so it's really really an amazing thing to see in that regard you know and that along those lines right you know i'll talk about entrepreneurship talk about business a lot it's something I love, something I'm fascinated about. So always love to hear what kind of drives people, right? So talk to me about you, about what's your definition of success, what success looks like for you, whether it's personal, professionally, spiritually, anything or anything else. Yeah, no, that's a great question. To me, what I always look for is the intersection of impact and innovation. And those are the two most important things. If I feel like what I'm doing is impacting people in a positive way and improving their life, but doing it through an innovative lens, that is what really makes me excited and why, you know, I think like those two words really lend themselves well to entrepreneurship, which is, I guess, where I am right now is, is, you know, very excited to be an entrepreneur and to be building a a brand like this. And so, yeah, to me, those are always the two words I come back to before I say yes to any opportunity, whether it's consulting or speaking engagement or anything is, you know, will this opportunity move forward, you know, a way that can improve people's lives, that can impact people's lives, but in a different, unconventional, exciting, innovative way. And so I would say on the professional side, that, and then on the personal side, the way that I feel successful is if I'm able to, I feel like having a work-life balance is kind of impossible just simply because as in, I I don't like the term balance because I think balance just means that like one thing is weighed heavier than another. And I don't think that that's how life should be looked at. I think 
that we need to look at it more as like a work-life harmony or like a work-life integration or something like that. Both of those terms being thrown around, I, like some sort of combination I think is is ideal. So I always try to make time for friends and for family and for my relationship, but I also ensure that what I'm doing professionally also fills up my cup just as much. No, I love that, you know, harmony, right? I think that's what we're all seeking. You know, balance is one thing, right? How do you measure balance, you know? And Correct, yeah. harmony mm-hmm. is something that we can definitely feel. We can, we know when something's in, in harmony, when something's in that place, right? And, you know, it's like when you feel the whole world's breathing with you, you know, kind of thing. And I um, mean, things are just in the flow and uh, it's really exciting. So all that is really great stuff. And, you know, it's really, it really is great to see you know, I haven't been able to check out your CV, right? But to hear all the different ventures you've been in and how you've been so open, right? And it seems like you've been in harmony with your own journey, right? Because from the beginning, you're like, hey, this doesn't really sit well with me. I'd love to see how this works out. or I'd love to pursue this a little bit more. And you've been able to kind of, you know, blaze this trail here where you're able to now, not only have you been able to find that for yourself, but you're finding it for others who were maybe in your shoes at one time and being able to mentor them at the same time while, you know, consulting and doing what you love and building a brand and, and growing this. And, and it's really, really exciting to see and been very, very wonderful connecting with you. Now, before I let you go, obviously, you know, how can all our listeners find out more about uh, Element Apothec, connect with you, get your products and everything else that we talked about here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you so much again for having me. And yeah, I'll have to send you some product. I'm so excited to, to hear what you think of it. So Woodland Hills, you know, I'm right around the corner in West Hills, so not too bad. Oh, but. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Our other two um, co-founders live in Woodland Hills, so I'm I'm there all the time. So yeah, how they can find us. So our website is elementapothic.com. So E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-P-O-T-H-E-C.com. And then you can find me at my website, drswathi.com. So D-O-C-T-O-R-S-W-A-T-H-I.com. And yes, please feel free to reach out on our website. As you mentioned, there is a place to, you know, ask Dr. Swathi. You're more than welcome to message me there or to send me a message through my website. But yeah, always, always here to help. So please let me know what I can do to help. Wow, fantastic. And everybody, you know, the links will be right here in the description wherever you listen to us. And I want to thank you, everybody, wherever you're listening to us for taking time out and uh, jumping on here with, with me and Dr. Swathi. And Dr. Swathi, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for you, your time, your expertise, and a really exciting stuff, definitely. So uh, good luck to you the rest of the year and beyond. Oh, thank you so much. You too. Thanks for listening to Dank Discussions. We are so grateful for each and every one of you. Please make sure you subscribe and leave a review. We want to continue making dank content you want to hear, so give us some feedback about the topics you want covered. Feel free to reach out to us at grow at calican.com. That's G-R-O-W at C-A-L-A-C-A-N-N.com. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter for our latest updates.